Hello students, in today's video we are going to study pharmacology of uh, two antifungal drugs amphotericin B and nystatin. Amphotericin B and nystatin are polines. They both produce antifungal effect by the same mechanism of action. So let's understand mechanism of action of amphotericin B. Now look at this figure. Every fungal cell is bounded by a cell membrane. So this is the fungal cell membrane. Now like human cell membrane, fungal cell membrane is also made up of phospholipid bilayer. But a special unique characteristic feature of a fungal cell membrane is the presence of ergosterols. So uh, these are ergosterols shown here in the green color. Now look at this figure. Uh, it depicts structure of amphotericin B. Now one side of amphotericin B molecule is highly lipophilic that is lipid soluble while the other side is hydrophilic that is water soluble. Now polines like uh, amphotericin B they show high affinity for ergosterols. They bind to ergosterols in the fungal cell membrane and form micropores in the cell membrane. They align themselves in such a way that their hydrophilic side forms the interior of micropore. Now this increases permeability of the cell membrane and thus ions like uh, potassium, uh, then magnesium, sodium, hydrogen, chloride, amino acids and other water soluble substances move out of the cytoplasm of the cell. So all these substances, they leak from the cytoplasm. They come outside the cell. So this leakage of cellular content causes fungal cell death. So this is the mechanism of action by which polines, uh, they kill the fungal cells. Now, very, very important here to understand that polines target already formed fungal cell membrane and they destroy it. They bind to ergosterols, increase the cellular permeability and cause fungal cell death. Now unlike polines, some other antifungal drugs belonging to azoles, allyl amine categories like for example uh, drugs like uh, fluconazole, cotrimazole, they inhibit synthesis of ergosterol and thereby they prevent the synthesis of new cell membrane. They do not target already formed cell membrane. So this is a unique characteristic feature of polines that they target already formed fungal cell membrane. Another very important uh, point with respect to polines is this that in addition to ergosterol present in the fungal cell membrane, these polines they also bind to cholesterol present in the human cell membrane though with the uh, with a lesser affinity. So they produce micropores in the human cell membrane also. Thus polines are highly toxic. So this is the mechanism of action of polines. Now let's discuss pharmacology of uh, amphotericin B. Now amphotericin B is obtained from bacterium streptomyces nodosus. Now amphotericin B has the widest antifungal spectrum amongst all antifungal drug. It is active against a wide range of fungi like uh, candidiasis, then uh, cryptococcus, aspergillosis, mucormycosis, then cochideoidomycosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, etc. Uh, now let's discuss some important pharmacokinetic features of amphotericin B. Now amphotericin B is not absorbed orally. However, it can be given orally for the treatment of intestinal candidiasis where when it is given orally it is not absorbed systemically that means it is not absorbed in the blood rather it produces very effective local antifungal effect in the intestine. Now amphotericin B is administered by slow intravenous infusion 
for systemic mycosis that is systemic fungal infection where internal body organs get get uh, infected with the fungi now amphotericin b when infused iv uh, it is widely distributed in the body tissues but it does not cross blood brain barrier its penetration is very poor in the cerebrospinal fluid so for the treatment of fungal meningitis that is fungal infection of brain or spinal cord amphotericin b is administered by intrathecal route which could be dangerous and can cause uh, cns toxicity now amphotericin b is uh, used topically for superficial infections like fungal vaginitis uh, that is the fungal infection of uh, vagina then uh, automycosis that is fungal infection of uh, outer ear canal it is used for other superficial infections also now as uh, discussed it uh, Uh, it is widely distributed in body and does not cross blood brain barrier now amphotericin b binds to cholesterol in the tissues and also binds to lipoproteins in the plasma uh, when it is administered to the human beings and thus it it uh, stays in the body for a long period of time it has a half life of uh, 15 days and about 60% of amphotericin b is metabolized in the liver and it is excreted slowly in the urine and bile so these are uh, some very important pharmacokinetic features of amphotericin b and uh, now let's discuss adverse effects of uh, amphotericin b now amphotericin b is the most toxic of all antifungals and thus it is used systemically to treat serious life threatening fungal infections now infusion iv infusion of uh, amphotericin b causes infusion related acute reactions now infusion of uh, amphotericin b causes uh, acute reaction manifested by symptoms like chills fever then aches and pain uh, then uh, dyspnea uh, that is difficulty in breathing nausea etc now use of antihistaminics then use of corticosteroids like for example hydrocortisone can reduce the severity of these acute reactions then uh, thrombophlebitis that is inflammation of injected vein can also occur another uh, important and serious adverse effect of uh, amphotericin b is the dose related severe nephrotoxicity and now its manifestations are now first of all Uh, there is rise in the nitrogenous waste products in the blood like for example there is rise in the level of urea creatinine in the blood due to renal dysfunction and this is termed as azotemia so this azotemia occurs because of the nephrotoxicity then fall in the glomerular filtration rate it can cause renal tubular acidosis now here Uh, i would like to discuss uh, one important point that uh, amphotericin b as we have already discussed binds to cholesterol also so amphotericin b binds to cholest cholesterol it binds to the cholesterol which is present in the cell membrane of uh, renal tubular cells and causes formation of micropores in them so this causes leakage of potassium thereby reducing the level of potassium in the blood termed as hypokalemia this uh, also causes leakage of magnesium that uh, reduces concentration of uh, magnesium in the blood and uh, produces adverse effect that is hypomagnesemia so these are the manifestations of uh, nephrotoxicity now in addition to this reduced secretion of erythropoietin by kidneys causes anemia then as discussed uh, central nervous system toxicity can also occur because of uh, intrathecal uh, administration of uh, amphotericin b and it is manifested uh, by symptoms like headache vomiting uh, 
uh, seizures and urological damage can also occur. So toxicity of amphotericin B is high and it's very challenging to administer amphotericin B. Lots of monitoring is required when uh, amphotericin B is administered. Uh, now let's study the formulations of amphotericin B. Now amphotericin B is available in two types of formulations. One is the conventional, other is the lipid formulations. Now all these formulations, conventional as well as lipid formulations are given by intravenous infusion. Now amphotericin B deoxycholate is the conventional preparation of amphotericin B. It's a deoxycholate salt of amphotericin B. Then uh, three lipid formulations of uh, amphotericin B are available namely liposomal amphotericin B, then uh, amphotericin B lipid complex, then amphotericin B colloidal dispersion. Now look at this figure, it shows liposomal amphotericin B. It is a unique formulation of uh, amphotericin B. Now as you can see here, uh, amphotericin molecules are present uh, within the lipid bilayer of liposome. So now let's uh, see to the special features of uh, liposomal amphotericin B. Now liposomal amphotericin B produces equivalent blood levels as that of conventional amphotericin B preparation. Now compared to conventional amphotericin B, liposomal amphotericin B is less nephrotoxic it causes uh, less acute reaction and uh, minimal anemia. Now in addition to this, uh, liposomal amphotericin B achieves targeted delivery and thus the liposome releases amphotericin B on the fungal cells and not on the human cells and thus liposomal amphotericin B is less toxic. But Clinical efficacy of uh, liposomal amphotericin B is similar to conventional amphotericin B. Now, in addition to this, all these lipid preparations of uh, amphotericin B are very expensive compared to uh, conventional amphotericin B. So, these are the conventional and uh, lipid formulations of amphotericin B. Uh, now let's discuss uses of amphotericin B. Now as discussed earlier, amphotericin B can be used topically uh, for the treatment of oral, vaginal and cutaneous candidiasis. Uh, then uh, used topically for the treatment of automycosis. Then uh, it can be administered orally for uh, intestinal mycosis where it is not absorbed in the blood but it acts locally in the intestine and treats the fungal infection. Then as already discussed, amphotericin B has a poor penetration in the cerebrospinal fluid and therefore it is administered intrathecally for the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. Uh, now let's see to the uses of uh, liposomal amphotericin B. Now liposomal amphotericin B is given by intravenous infusion for the treatment of uh, fungal infection in febrile neutropenic patients not responding to antibacterial antibiotics. Then uh, it is also used for the treatment of severe systemic mycosis. That means uh, in the treatment of severe fungal infections of the internal organs. And it is also used for the treatment of uh, uh, leishmaniasis. So these are the uses of amphotericin B. Uh, now let's discuss drug interactions of uh, amphotericin B. Now flu cytosine. Flucytosin is another antifungal drug that inhibits synthesis of fungal DNA and RNA. Now, as we know, amphotericin B forms micropores in the fungal cell membrane and therefore it facilitates entry of uh, flucytosin inside the fungal cell. So, in the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis, amphotericin B is used along with flucytosin and these two drugs exhibit synergistic effect. Then uh, as we know amphotericin uh, B is nephrotoxic 
Now, nephrotoxicity of amphotericin B is enhanced when it is administered with drugs like uh, aminoglycosides, vancomycin, cyclosporine, etc. because these drugs are also nephrotoxic. So, this is the pharmacology of uh, amphotericin B. Now, uh, let's discuss pharmacology of nystatin. Nystatin is also a polyne. Uh, nystatin is obtained from uh, Streptomyces norsi. Its antifungal mechanism of action is similar to that of uh, amphotericin B. Now, nystatin has a very high systemic toxicity. That is, it, it is highly toxic if it is absorbed in the blood. So, it is not used systemically. It is used only for local superficial fungal infections. Then another uh, uh, feature of uh, nystatin, nystatin is not absorbed uh, when given orally. Uh, now let's discuss uses of nystatin. Now given orally, nystatin is not absorbed and therefore it does not produce toxic effects. So it is used orally for the treatment of uh, monelial diarrhea. Now, growth of candida in the intestine produces monelial diarrhea and when nystatin is given orally, it produces local effects, effect in the intestine and kills intestinal candida. Now, oral use of nystatin can cause nausea and bad taste in the mouth. Now, besides its use in monelial diarrhea, nystatin is used topically for the treatment of uh, vaginal candidiasis, then for the treatment of oral candidiasis also known as oral thrush. Then uh, it is also used uh, uh, topically for the treatment of cutaneous or uh, skin candidiasis and uh, also uh, used in the treatment of corneal and uh, conjunctival candidiasis. So this is the pharmacology of uh, polyenes. Uh, namely amphotericin B and uh, nystatin. Please note, information provided in this video is only for informative academic purpose. For use of amphotericin B or nystatin or for the treatment of fungal infections, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.